but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in all Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, those words of the Lord Jesus to his followers, his last words were fulfilled on the day of Pentecost and on this Pentecost Sunday, uh, we welcome you as we gather together to meet the living Lord we gather together in his name on this Pentecost Sunday. The Lord be with you and also with you. Pentecost Sunday began inside, began with God's people, the disciples together in prayer. When the Spirit came upon them, they were out on the streets. They were out to talk to people about Jesus. They looked to him and they spoke of him. Well, as we begin, let's pray to him. Let's pray. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles with the wind from heaven and tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel by the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, on this Pentecost Sunday, we welcome you if you're gathering here with us for the first time or you're a regular here. It's great to be able to connect with you. And we welcome today our own bishop, Bishop David, as he comes to preach on God's Word uh, from Acts chapter 2 uh, this morning. But as we uh, begin to gather uh, around our screens, uh, around uh, to hear uh, God this morning, uh, let's use these words, these sentences of Scripture as we draw near to God, that he would open our mouth to declare his praises, that we would be confident he's with us by his spirit. So respond, please, with the words in bold. Open our lips, O Lord, and we shall declare your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We now stand and sing together, breathe, O oh breathe, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit and find, let us find thy promised rest. We sing together, love divine, all loves excelling. <laughs> Receive 
when he had sinned against the Lord, wrote these words, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Well, David knew he had sinned against the Lord and what he had done in his actions and his thoughts, and he came to him for forgiveness. We're going to do that now as we confess our sins together. Please join in the words in bold as we ask God to have mercy, mercy on us sinners through Jesus Christ. So join in the words with me. Lord, we have come to see that our lives fall far short of your glory. Have mercy and forgive us. Lord, you have given your life for us and poured out your spirit yet we fail to return your love with all our heart. Have mercy and change us. Too often we are selfish and proud, ignoring you, Lord, and neglecting others. Have mercy and cleanse us. Lord, when we do not truly trust and obey you, we are overwhelmed by self-pity, fear, and worry. Have mercy and deliver us. In Christ we are given a sure hope and a secure love, yet we follow the false hopes and desires of this world. Have mercy and forgive us. Father, through the redeeming death of your Son on the cross, by your Spirit and through your Word, transform and renew us to follow you with joy. All this we ask, confident in your unchanging faithfulness. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayers this morning are led by CMSI, Church Missionary Society Ireland, uh, CMSI Global at Prayer and uh, will be led by various people from across the globe as we remember on this Pentecost Sunday how the gospel went out to the nations and so many from the nations now lead us in this time of prayer. <music>
Almighty and merciful God, we give thanks for your Church throughout the world. Thank you that we are part of a global family of faith that is much bigger than ourselves. Thank you that we belong together as one united body. We pray that you would strengthen the bonds of friendship and love that we share across the world. Please help us to care more deeply for one another, to listen more carefully to one another, to share more generously with one another. Help us to grow together. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope, and peace that only you can bring. Almighty and merciful God, we pray for our nations. We pray particularly for all those countries where the wider CMSI family is at work. We pray for Burundi. For the Democratic Republic of Congo. For Egypt. For Ireland. For Kenya. For Nepal. For Rwanda. For South Sudan. For Uganda. For United Kingdom. For Zambia. Amen. We pray that you would guide and bless our political leaders, our healthcare workers, and all who strive to keep us safe and provide for our needs. Oh, gracious God, we humbly ask you, you would bring the end, the suffering of our people, whether from COVID-19 or from any other things that are causing pain and despair at this time. Help us, your people, to shine brightly in this present darkness. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope, and peace that only you can bring. Almighty and merciful God, we pray for our own churches and dioceses. We ask you to bless each parish and congregation. During this period of isolation and separation, may you draw us more closely together. Help us discover new ways to worship together, to learn together, and to bless one another. Show us, Lord, how to love and serve one another more effectively in our local churches. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope, and peace that only you can bring. Almighty and merciful God, we pray today for the most vulnerable members of our own societies, particularly those whose their struggles are magnified in this period of lockdown. We pray for all who are sick, whether as a result of COVID-19 or other health conditions. May they experience your healing touch and know that you are with them. We pray for those who are grieving. May they know your comfort and strength. We pray for those who are living in extreme poverty, those who are struggling to make ends meet at a time of reduced support and care. May you provide for their needs 
and bring your hope in the midst of their despair. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated. May they know your presence and your companionship. We pray for those struggling with mental health issues and addictions. May they know your peace, which passes all understanding. We pray for vulnerable children in our care systems. May they know the stability and security that you bring through your relentless and unconditional love. We pray for those who have been uprooted and displaced from their homes. May they experience your welcome and your loving embrace. We pray for all who continue to experience the horrors of violence and war. May they know your protection and may you bring lasting peace to their lands. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope, and peace that only you can bring. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came through death, that we might have life in all its fullness. Amen. Bible reading for this Pentecost Sunday is Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through to 11 and before Bishop David comes to speak on the day of Pentecost let's read about it from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. When the day of Pentecost arrived they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of each one of our hearts be today and always acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It is such a joy and a real privilege this morning to be able to bring this message, to be able to bring this uh, talk to the churches uh, across our diocese of, of Down and Moor on this Pentecost Sunday. We make much in the church of Christmas and rightly so. We make something of Holy Week and Easter and ought to make a lot more of, of them. Uh, when Pentecost comes, it just about gets a mention. We sing the familiar hymn, Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving us your Holy Spirit till the work on earth is done. Uh, so let's focus in this morning on who the Holy Spirit is, what his work is, uh, and what 
this Sunday of Pentecost should mean to us as a church in the diocese today and in the days that lie ahead. I, I've woke up these past mornings with uh, just the, the words of the first verse of Acts 2 in, in my mind and I've been unable, unable to move very far away from these six words which say, when the day of Pentecost arrived. When the day of Pentecost arrived. I want to take those words as a text for this morning. When the day of Pentecost arrived, some incredibly significant things happened. 120 disciples of Jesus were filled. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost arrived, 120 people whose characters were enriched by the experience were made more Christ-like from that time onwards. When the day of Pentecost arrived, 120 people received new gifts of speech and insight that would equip them to proclaim Christ. Peter alone would preach a sermon later that very same day where 3,000 people would become followers of Jesus. When the day of Pentecost arrived, 120 people had their hearts and the very depths of their innermost emotions set on fire with a deep, deep love for Christ and for the things of his kingdom and with a zeal and a love and a, a devotion towards Jesus and to make Jesus Christ known. They began to preach his cross. They began to proclaim his death. They began to preach the, the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They began to take the gospel into the whole known world. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the church was born and every day tens and hundreds and indeed thousands would be added to the church as people believed in Christ, as people were converted to Christ, as men and women and whole families would give their lives to Jesus, as people would repent and believe the good news and become followers of Jesus Christ. And here's the thing, it continues, it continues, it continues to this very day. Ernest Baker in one of his books writes this, he says, Pentecost made the apostles. Pentecost created the church. Pentecost caused the church's expansion. And he goes on, Pentecost spread Christianity throughout the whole known earth. He writes these words, The church has had a fluctuating history. It has seen many ups and downs, but the power of Pentecost has never been completely lost. A power was sent out into the world all that time ago that has never left it. All the good news in the history of the church is due to the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, that's so true. The translation and the circulation of the, of the Bible, God's Word, we can attribute to the work of God's Spirit. The Reformation, we can contribute to the work of God's Holy Spirit. Other moves of God in church history, like the evangelical revival to the revival of missions, we can contribute to the work of the Holy Spirit. The 1859 revival in, in Ireland and other notable awakenings across our world, we can contribute to the work of the Holy Spirit. These are all phases of this one Pentecost. One writer has written these words. He said, Pentecost contained all these in germ. And as Pentecost is studied and understood, it tends to repeat itself. But on the other hand, we must not separate out this uh, day of Pentecost from all that has gone before, from the teaching of the prophets and the, the writings of the Old Testament, from the incarnation, from the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, from his life or his teaching or his ministry or his resurrection or his death on the cross or his ascension, these incredible truths that came before Pentecost are all part of the gospel that we as a church 
proclaim. Luke gave us his gospel, the story of the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus before he gave us the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. We read in Acts 1, In the first book of Theophilus I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his sufferings by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost arrived, Peter on that very day would preach God's word. We read in Acts 2 verses 23 to 24 some of what he declared. He said, This Jesus delivered according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the proclamation of God's word would take off in a, in a new way. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that had been long prophesied would be poured out on the church fulfilling scripture. This is so relevant for the church in this 21st century. The words of General William Booth who founded the Salvation Army uh, when he analysed the dangers of the 20th century uh, he, he said some things that are actually so much even more true for us in this 21st century. He named six dangers let me name them. He named religion without the Holy Spirit. He named Christianity without Christ. Forgiveness without repentance. Salvation without regeneration. Politics without God. Heaven without hell. Now there might be a sermon series for some of our parishes in the days that lie ahead. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the world into which the Holy Spirit came upon the 120 was a world in need of the Holy Spirit. A world that was in, as much in need then of the Holy Spirit as our world today is in need of a fresh move, a fresh outpouring of God's Holy Spirit upon the people of God, upon the Church of God and upon our nations in these days. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the wind of the Holy Spirit blew and the fire of the Holy Spirit fell. And that same wind and that same fire is needed in our churches today. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the 120 knew that they needed to obey and to wait on the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. They had been waiting for him to come. Then and now, earnest, believing prayer is needed just as it was needed then in the life of that early believing church. Then and still now repentance is necessary in order to become a disciple of, a disciple of Jesus. In order to become a follower of Christ our lifestyle will be transformed as we repent and as we believe the good news. Then as now, the work of the Holy Spirit is a work that brings about purity of life and lifestyle. I want to remind the church in Down and Remor today that he is the Holy Spirit. I love the testimony of Duncan Campbell. I love indeed uh, so much by way of writings of that were written by people who experienced revival down through church history. And Duncan Campbell, uh, writing about the revival that happened in the Outer Hebrides in his book that's called The Price and Power of Revival, he said this. He said, after spending 17 years baffled and frustrated in Christian work, I suddenly came to realise that God made provision for clean hands and a pure heart. 
He goes on, on my face in my own study at five o'clock in the morning, I came to know the recovering power of the blood of Christ. I know that in some small measure, the revival in Lewis and later in Sky must be related to the experience of that morning. When the day of Pentecost arrived, it was the Holy Spirit that came upon the 120. Then and now, resolving to be those who would obey the word of God and follow the commandments of God and keep and be sustained by the promises of God is something that you and I need to resolve in our hearts and in our lives. I want to share with you that long ago I resolved to stand on God's promises. I resolved to believe his word. In dark days when all was dark and it was hard to think right as I went through in my own personal life, grief and, and pain and loss, I resolved then and I've resolved since to stand on, to believe in and to trust in the promises of God and to build my life and to seek to lead a church that would build its witness and its work and its mission and its ministry on the Word of God. I'd like to take, if I may, just a couple of minutes this morning and I'll try to be brief to share with you just some of the ways that the Holy Spirit has worked in my life. Uh, ways that I hope will encourage you uh, to invite him to work in the lives of our churches in these days. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit showed me very clearly as a young man how he was at work in the lives of others around me in a way that made their lives attractive, full of purpose and different in that they stood out. I now recognise that they were becoming those who were becoming more Christ-like. Back then, the Holy Spirit convicted me or showed me my own need to repent the Holy Spirit enabled me to recognise that I was a, a sinful guy, a sinful man. And as I listened to God's word being preached and explained, I repented. I began to turn away from sin and to believe in Jesus Christ and to give my whole life to following Jesus as Lord. I experienced many, many years later uh, something that I'd love to share with you. A, a deep work of God in my life when at a, a clergy a retreat, uh, some time after I'd been widowed, I was a, a single dad at the time. I was in the throes of pain and, and grief and, and loss. And, and as we gathered in that, it was an upper room actually, and as we prayed and as others prayed for us and as others prayed for me quite literally and I exaggerate not that room shook that room shook as God's Holy Spirit ministered deep healing into my life and into the lives of others around that same time uh, when along with Bishop Ken a group of us attended a church growth conference in Singapore we listened uh, to the to the, uh, the rector of the church there at Canon Derek Hall as he would hold his Bible at the beginning of each of his talks and he would say this is the Word of God this is my Bible I am who it says I am I can do what it says I can do and uh, as I went forward at the end of those talks uh, to receive prayer and on one occasion as I lay prostrate before the Lord on my face I recognised that even self-pity when we try to justify it and when we indulge in it can become sinful and such a deep work of God's Holy Spirit was worked in my heart and in my life that when I eventually eventually stood up I had a, a deeper love than ever for Jesus and a greater hunger for his word than I'd ever known I was, quite truthfully, a, a different person. 
the Holy Spirit comes. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, all 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit. And soon many others around them would begin to repent and to believe. When people come to Christ and give their lives to Christ, as I trust many in churches across our diocese might consider doing this morning, the same word that Peter spoke applies to us as we come to Jesus for the first time to give our lives to him. Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then having come to Christ, as we go on all of our lives, all of our days, loving and following Jesus, the exhortation of Paul in Ephesians consider, continues to be true for the remainder of our lives when he said, be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the outworking of it all in verse 47, praising God and having favour with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. That's what we need to be praying for, asking for, crying out to God for, seeking for and believing for in the life of today's church, in our diocese, in our nation, in our world. The Holy Spirit changes lives the Holy Spirit brings about salvation in people's lives. And the church today continues and must increasingly continue to find ways to say clearly and lovingly and boldly and with welcome the words that Peter said, save yourselves from this crooked generation. He is the Holy Spirit who calls us to become followers of Jesus, to become those who become like Jesus, who are transformed by the beauty of Jesus, who build our lives on the word of God, who do the works of God, and who go on being all our lives filled with the Holy Spirit. Some dare to suggest that the church will disappear, overcome by the spirit of the age. But no, the Holy Spirit is stronger than the power of this age, and he's stronger than the power of any age. He transforms lives, he alters and brings transformation to communities. He brings about a new and a godly society when he moves in power. And he is the gift of God. He's actually God's gift to the church. He's the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. And so, as we may be this morning, some of you who are listening, surrender your life to Jesus, the Christ, for the very first time, or come to him afresh to be renewed and refreshed and uh, filled again with his Holy Spirit. My prayer for each, my prayer for you, my prayer for all, my prayer for myself is simply this, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. The late canon David Watson is one of my heroes and he left us with some great writings. And in his writings, he left us with some beautiful prayers. And it's with one of his prayers that I want to finish this morning. And one of his prayers that I'd encourage you to make your own. So that this morning, you can encounter the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit might encounter you. And so we pray. Please. Feel free to pray these words aloud, perhaps, or quietly in your heart today. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me 
and have given your Son for me. I am sorry for every way in which I have hurt you and grieved your Holy Spirit. I repent of everything in my life that I know is wrong. I confess these sins to you and humbly ask you to cleanse me from all sin. I give myself afresh to you. I want Christ to be Lord of every part of my life, my personal life, my family life, my social life, my work, my time, my money, my relationships, my ambitions, my awe. I want to love you with all my heart. And now I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with new life, new love, new joy and new strength. Fill every part of my being as humbly I claim the promise of your Son. Fill me that I may live and work to your praise and glory. Thank you, Father. I believe that you have heard my prayer. I praise you and worship you. Help me every day to go on being filled with your Holy Spirit more and more that I may walk in your ways all the days of my life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord protect you in each one of your parishes today and always. And may he go on filling you with his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the words and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be upon you, upon those you love upon those for whom you pray, and upon all our churches and communities in Down and Moor, this day and always. Amen. Well, let's respond to what we've heard this morning. First, as we say together some ancient words, the words of the Nicene Creed, a summary of the Christian faith that puts our faith in the one true God, who is Father, Son, and Spirit. Today we remember the Spirit is the Lord, the giver of life. And so would you say these words with me together? We believe in one God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. And let's respond from what we've heard as well this morning by praying, praying for revival, spiritual awakening, the pouring out of God's Spirit on this area of Belfast as we seek to pray for a spiritual harvest. Heavenly Father, we beg you to pour out your Spirit in these days. Awaken the unconverted and revive those who love you. Grant your people a true vision of your glory, a renewed faithfulness to your word, and a deeper consecration to your service, so that through their witness, your kingdom may advance and all peoples be brought to fear your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. Well, let's stand up and sing up wherever we are with thankfulness for God's gift of his Spirit. Let's sing, There is a Redeemer. glad you're able to uh, join with us for our main service today. Uh, on this Pentecost Sunday we have an evening Bible talk as well. Uh, we've been looking at Jesus' words on the Holy Spirit from John's Gospel, so do 
uh, check that out this evening here on our YouTube channel and see previous week's talks there as well. But as we finish our time here at St. Jude's and go on our way, let's pray together. Faithful God, who fulfill the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and open to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>